Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be going over 10 signs of low iron. If you're new here, welcome, my name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist, and in this video, we're gonna be going over how the skin, hair, and nails provide clues to iron deficiency, the most common nutritional deficiency worldwide. What is iron? Iron is a mineral that is naturally present in foods in our diet. It's also added to foods, and of course is present in dietary supplements. Iron is essential for hemoglobin. What the heck is hemoglobin? It's a protein inside red blood cells that is responsible for carrying oxygen from our lungs to different tissues throughout our body. Iron is also present in another protein, myoglobin, and is really important for muscle function and connective tissue health. It is vital to the health of our immune system, to fighting off infections. It plays a key role in how certain enzymes throughout the body do their thing. And iron is really important for epithelial structures like our skin, the lining of our gut. When people become iron deficient, they become very lethargic. They have poor exercise and work tolerance. I mean, just think about it. Your body is really just not able to transport oxygen to the tissues so that your body can function properly. And in children, iron deficiency can can result in developmental delay and poor growth. It also can cause cognitive and intellectual dysfunction. When your body becomes low in iron, you will crave it so much, it can lead you to eat things that are not food. This is called pica. And one type of pica is called geophagia, basically eating dirt. Another type of pica is pagophagia, eating ice chips. Why might you become iron deficient? We can think of causes of iron deficiency in three broad categories. Number one is increase in demand for iron. Number two is an increase in loss of iron from the body. And number three is a decrease in intake or poor absorption of iron. Increase in demand for iron is typically seen in periods of your life where you have a need for growth, like when you were an adolescent going through a growth spurt. In infants, iron is vital for pregnancy because you are growing another human being, and it's also in demand when you are lactating. Category number two for iron deficiency is increase in loss of iron. This can happen with childbirth. You often lose quite a bit of blood, and it can happen as a result of having a menstrual cycle, and especially if your periods are heavy. You can lose blood in your stool from your gastrointestinal tract, maybe from a, a bleeding ulcer. And if you donate blood, that is a risk factor for iron deficiency. As a matter of fact, 25 to 35% of people who regularly donate blood, which is a good thing to do, by the way, I do encourage people to consider and look into doing that. But 25 to 35% of those who do regularly donate blood will go on to become iron deficient. Category number three is a decrease in iron intake or poor iron absorption. Vegetarian vegan diets, while you can get sufficient iron from those diets, you have to be a lot more strategic, uh, or just poor diet overall, not just vegan and vegetarian. Any chronic inflammatory bowel disease can lead to poor absorption of iron, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, ulcerative colitis. If you've had any kind of surgery to your stomach or intestines, like bypass surgery, Certain medications can impair the absorption of iron. Aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications can irritate the gastric lining and lead to poor absorption of iron. In premenopausal women, the most common cause of iron deficiency is going to be menstruation and pregnancy. Now in men and postmenopausal women, the most common cause of iron deficiency is going to be loss of blood from the gastrointestinal tract, say from like an ulcer or something, or it's going to be poor absorption. So let's break down the skin, hair, and nail signs of iron deficiency. Number one is pallor. That basically means you will appear pale because your body starts to shunt blood away from the skin to more vital organs as the oxygen carrying capacity of your blood decreases with that drop in iron. Now for people with deeper skin tones, pallor is not gonna be as obvious. You have to look at the palms of the hands in order to appreciate pallor in people with deeper skin tones. People with deeper skin tones will at baseline have pigment in the creases of their palms and the surrounding skin will be much paler. There's no pigment there. But with iron deficiency, 
the pigment in the creases starts to fade. And once the pigment in the creases fades to a point where it matches the surrounding skin, that's actually roughly equivalent to having a hemoglobin level less than seven. So that is a clue to anemia, to, to iron deficiency anemia right there, just by looking at the palms. It, it approximates even a lab value. Another way to check for pallor is to look at the mucosal membranes. They too can become pale. That's a more obvious way, place to look, especially in people with deeper skin tones. Oral mucosa can become pale. And then the mucosa that lines, it's called the uh, conjunctiva. Uh, pull your lower lid down and look at the, and look at the mucosa there. It's typically kind of reddish. It will become pale in the setting of iron deficiency. Number two is one of the most frequently searched skin issues I feel like on the internet, and that is dark circles. Now, this is not specific to iron deficiency and why it occurs, it's not entirely well understood, but it may be secondary to the fact that there is less circulation to the skin under the eyes, making it look more pigmented or it could be that the face is pale and so the pigment that is naturally present under the eyes is more obvious. Now, in many cases of iron deficiency anemia where you have dark under eye circles, many people do report improvement once their iron levels are restored to normal. Number three is angular chelitis. Now, I have a video talking all about this condition. It's basically painful cracks at the corner of the mouth with redness, sometimes a little bit of swelling. And one of the reasons why people with iron deficiency may be more vulnerable to this is because iron is so important for the health of the epithelial cells that there's a little bit of breakdown there. Plus, people with iron deficiency are more likely to have issues with candida yeast because they don't control you know, the amount of microorganisms well. And candida yeast is naturally present in our mouth, but with iron deficiency, it could kind of take over a little bit, especially in the corners of the mouth where the skin may be very weakened. Moving into the mouth, number four is atrophic glossitis. Look at the tongue. It's going to be bright red and shiny and glossy and painful. What happens here is that because of the iron deficiency, you actually lose the taste buds. And that the reason that happens is because iron is so important for those differentiating epithelial cells. So without good iron levels, those kind of become atrophied and you get a very smooth, shiny tongue. It was very painful. You can't tolerate like spicy or hot foods or alcohol. And so it's very uncomfortable. Fortunately, you know, that will resolve with iron replacement. Number five is itch. You can have generalized itch all over the body or you can have localized itch. For whatever reason, people with iron deficiency are known to develop itch in the areas around the genitals and around the anus. We don't know why that happens, but that seems to be a particularly vulnerable, itchy area in people with iron deficiency. It may be a presenting sign of an underlying cancer and cancers often can present with generalized itch, especially certain lymphomas. Hodgkin's lymphoma is one of the classics to present with generalized itch. And you know, it may kind of tie in with iron deficiency. Just because you're itchy, I don't want to alarm anybody. It doesn't mean you have cancer, but uh, that is a sign of, you know, that is a skin sign of cancer. Number six, dry skin. Remember back to my video on extreme dry skin, we were talking a lot about that hereditary condition, ichthyosis vulgaris, but in that video I mentioned you also can acquire extreme dry skin from certain underlying medical conditions. Iron deficiency might be one reason for extreme dry skin because you're not getting good um, oxygen delivery to the skin, to, to the tissues, and iron is so important for the function of enzymes that control the differentiation of the epidermis, so the integrity of the skin basically, and you're more vulnerable to water loss and dryness. And that ties into itch as well. Whenever you have dry skin and an impaired skin barrier, you're more likely to deal with itch as well. And they kind of feed off of each other. As you lose more water and become itchy, you scratch, that further disrupts the barrier, worsening dryness, it's a vicious cycle. So those two together uh, can, can be a clue to iron deficiency. Number seven is a nail finding that is interesting. It's called coilonychia or spoon nails. 
The nail plates are very thin and the lateral edges evert so that if you look at the nail, it almost looks like a little spoon. You could put a drop of water in there. Now, this is something that young children have and it's totally normal. They often have it on their toenails and it goes away. And in certain occupations, you can develop this as just kind of a result of handling of certain things, but it is seen in iron deficiency as well. Overall, the nails are more likely to be brittle in the setting of iron deficiency, probably a combination of the fact that you have poor oxygen delivery to the nails, you know, those cells that are trying to divide to make the nail plate. And you also have, you know, iron is important for the enzymes that are involved in cellular division. So you just have some weakening there as a result of that. Number eight, we kind of already touched on, but I'm gonna broaden it a bit. And that is just a tendency to develop skin infections. We already talked about how you're more likely to get a yeast infection in the corners of your mouth, angular chelitis, but that yeast can also cause skin problems, yeast infections in the genital area, under the breasts, anywhere we have skin on skin contact, and bacterial skin infections infections, namely Staphylococcus. That's that bacteria that causes impetigo. It also can get down into the hair follicles and cause um, a boil. People with iron deficiency can also develop a variety of fungal skin infections, more likely to deal with like ringworm, for example. Likely a combination of impaired immune system plus impaired skin barrier function, just making for an overall more hospitable environment for the colonization of a variety of microorganisms and pathogens. Number nine is dry, brittle hair. The hair is going to be more prone to breakage, likely because of poor oxygen delivery, nutrient delivery to the hair follicle for growing healthy, shiny hair. Any nutritional deficiency, the hair is going to be lackluster, brittle, and prone to breakage. And last but not least is hair loss. Hair loss and iron deficiency, they've had this relationship in the literature for a long time. Many times patients who come in with hair loss, we will check their iron levels and they will have low iron. Why this causes hair loss? Probably due to the fact that the hair matrix, that's where the, the cells are that actually make the hair. It's some of the, the, those are some of the most rapidly dividing cells in the human body. Iron is so important for cellular division, for duplicating DNA and skin cells. There's an enzyme ribonucleotide reductase. It is required for uh, replicating our DNA and it needs iron to do that. So it makes sense, you know, you're not getting good cell divisions in the hair matrix. So you're not gonna be growing hair well, you're gonna be shedding more. So you can develop what's called a telogen effluvium. Basically the hair cycles are like, okay, let's prioritize things and not put so many of us into the game. And by into the game, I mean antigen. That's the growing phase of the hair cycle. Instead, they, they, they go on the bench, which is known as telogen, you get shedding. And so you may notice, you know, it's like I've said in other videos, it's normal to lose 100 hairs a day, but with the telogen effluvium, I mean, it's coming out and coming out, clogging your drain. And this can result in diffuse thinning. But iron deficiency may also tie into androgenetic alopecia, pattern hair loss that a lot of people deal with. It may even uncover an underlying tendency towards androgenetic alopecia, just because it puts a lot of stress on the matrix, the hair matrix cells. So yeah, definitely low iron and iron deficiency is associated with hair loss. We don't know the full picture as to why this happens, and in many cases, you know, replacing the iron definitely improves the hair loss, albeit slowly. Anyways, you guys, those are the 10 signs of iron deficiency. I hope you all enjoyed this video. On the end slide, I'm going to link my video on the signs of B12 deficiency. If you're into these videos on how different nutritional deficiencies lead to skin, hair, and nail findings. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.